This is the most interesting thing I've ever seen at a mountain coaster. I don't know how uh, legal this is, especially that, but uh, it's happening nonetheless. Good morning from the Eagles View Lodge up here. It's one of the cabins. Uh, I don't remember what this cabin place is called, but it's one of the cabins. It's about, you know, 10 minutes away from Dollywood. And uh, I took some videos that I'm going to put in right after this from the balcony. It's gorgeous this morning here in the Smoky Mountains. And uh, today is a very special day. Amy, do you want to talk about what's your special day? I'm hitting my 400 right now. Yeah, she's at 399. So this SBF spinner last night was her 399. And yep, so we're going to go to Dollywood and uh, she's going to get her 400th credit on Thunderhead this morning. So yeah, come and join us. We're going to start heading to the park, then we'll see you there in the park. And for now, enjoy the views from the balcony this morning. Morning. Some nice banjo music playing as we walk up towards Thunderhead. Gonna go on that first to get Amy her 400th. So yeah, let's get up to Thunderhead. And the line starts park opens in about 20 minutes so yeah let's wait for Thunderhead to open and we're in five minutes before park opens let's go see you guys back here in two and a half minutes second train of the day Just got off of Thunderhead, her 400th credit here at Dollywood, our first coaster of the day. Let, let's start out. What were your thoughts? I, I'm I almost... loved it. I absolutely loved it. Yeah. I don't really know how to explain what I liked about it right now, honestly. I'll probably have a better opinion after I've ridden it a second time. Yeah, we're, we're going to come back later, but all I know is I've ridden many GCIs and that's definitely up there. That's so smooth. You can tell they've retracted a lot lately blistering smooth like I don't think I felt oh, many jackhammering at all fast we're only like, second train of the day yeah and, and it's, it, it, it already is holy I cannot wait to get night rides on that because I've heard great things I really want to but it was smooth fast uh, that to me is what I wish Apocalypse was at Magic Mound that small compact GCI I, I love GCIs and like this is just so well taken care of and yeah just really really loved it and her milestone so yeah she's now 400 and yeah let's go uh, explore the rest of the park Woo well drop line was closed so we're actually gonna go hit up mystery mine next so let's go get on this uh, Gerslauer roller coaster I'm really excited I've heard some 
mixed reviews on this, so I'm excited to see what we think of it. But the entrance is right around here. Nice misters here in the queue line, but it's the sign said it was a zero minute wait, so should be on in just a couple minutes. Looks like they're testing the tower now, so may put that up next. And yep, just looks like a station wait. Awesome. All right, we just got off of Mystery Mine. Their Gerstlauer Eurofighter coaster has uh, two vertical lift hills and a couple of inversions on there. And uh, wow, what a themed experience. I knew almost nothing about it going in other than it was a Eurofighter and it had the, the track profiling change recently where you don't do this really aggressive turn anymore that I heard was very neck banging. Um, but wow, what an amazing, amazing Eurofile. Easily one of my favorite Eurofiles I've ever written. Uh, probably the favorite. Well, what did you think of that? That was fantastic. Going in blind, honestly, is probably one of the best things we did. Um, so I'm not going to say much other than that of what happened on the ride. Because there were things that we didn't know was happening. It's like, oh, well, that's a shock. Um, it's probably my favorite, like, mine ride. So a mine-themed roller coaster. coaster. Yeah. yeah. Like, the mine-themed roller coaster. I think that is probably my absolute favorite. The theming was absolutely amazing the ride experience was great uh the couple spots just because of the uh restraints yeah that so it has the old style gerslauer over the shoulder restraints so short people usually have their ears banged around a little bit and us taller folks we usually have our necks hit a little bit uh, but honestly it wasn't that bad there's only a couple times that it happened Very minimal. which Very which minimal. there's we've been on worse your fighters where it's just completely side to side the whole time so definitely much appreciate how well they took care of that but yeah so far two coasters in both fantastic rides we're loving our day here so far and yeah let's see what we're gonna get on next Just got off of drop line, their drop tower, about 200 feet tall. And yeah, it was super enjoyable. Uh, I like that it had the rotating seats on the way up. It gave us a nice panoramic view of the park. Do you like that? I liked it, I liked it. I always love when you want you get a chance to see the park. Especially here with all the trees. You a harder time seeing some of the rides depending on where you're standing, especially when you're driving in. So you don't get a full view of everything. So being able to go up to the top and just even briefly for just a few seconds be able to look out around the park is really nice. Oh yeah, and it, it, the drop itself had a nice little kick to it, got a little bit of force. Uh, the, the brakes started a little bit higher than I like on a drop tower, but it was still super fun. Uh, and yeah, uh, let's go on and find our next attraction. Our relationship is built on trust and understanding. She doesn't trust me, and I don't understand her. <laughs> <laughs> Came back for a five minute wait on uh, Fire Chaser Express. So let's go uh, give this one a go. It's a family coaster that's got a launch and a lift hill. So let's go ride it.
been a couple rides since we last saw you. We uh, went on Fire Chaser Express, and first of all, that was a fantastic family coaster. Just, again, just, just keeping up with the theme here. The theming is amazing. Uh, really fun and unique. Nothing else I've ever ridden like that. I'm pretty sure it's like one of the very few of its kind. I wish there was more of those, because yeah, that's an excellent family coaster. What do you think of uh, Fire Chaser Express? Oh, I loved it. The theming was amazing. And then the ride experience, being able to go just the way that the ride was, going forward and then back again was great. You don't get too many of those, but you go both directions, so it's nice kind of getting a feel for it. that. Yeah, both forward and a backwards launch and a lift hill on that, so it's sort of a little bit of everything. And then we then went on Whistle Punk Chaser. Uh, they're a kiddie coaster here. And you know, it's a kitty coaster. It's a backbreaker. Yeah, yeah. When when you whenever you engage that bottom of that lift sill, you definitely get the towards the back, middle and the back of the train, you definitely get that little clink that you get in some of those kitty coasters. But yeah, you know, it's a credit. And uh yeah, so next I think we're gonna head back towards Wildwood Grove. And so yeah, we'll see you back there. just got off of Big Bear Mountain, uh, the brand new family launch coaster here at Dollywood by Vacoma. And wow, uh, you wanna go first, what did you think of that? Oh, it was so nice. It wasn't too crazy. It's a nice kind of introduction into bigger rides from like the, just the basic kit levels. It was so smooth, it was so quiet. The speed, you know, the speed up the launches were not too intense. They were very just, almost like as Tim was saying earlier, just speeding up on the freeway. Yeah, no, it was super enjoyable. Definitely one that you can ride with kids and older people alike, and everyone can find some enjoyment. It's not, it's not too crazy, but it definitely it's a little bit more than like you know uh, the the kitty coaster here and, and uh, the other indoor coaster. I a oh, Blazing Fury, that's the one. Uh, we haven't done it yet, but uh, it, it's definitely a step up from those, but not quite to the level of like uh, you know the big coasters here. So yeah, definitely a great addition to this park. And yeah, we're going to go uh, find something else to do uh, before we hop into line for a Dragonfly over here. All right, the next coaster we're gonna go on is Wild Eagle, their B&M wing coaster. Let's go give this a ride. <laughs> Only a 10 minute wait time. Let's go. Test seat right here. Wow, this Q house is beautiful. Wow. just got off of Wild Eagle, their b and wing coaster here, and all I can say is that I, did, I, I heard a lot of people say that like it wasn't their favorite wing coaster, but I have to disagree. I love that wing coaster so much. Honestly, it's my second favorite wing coaster behind Thunderbird at Holiday World. Uh, we were talking to someone in line, and they said that it recently just got the, the, lock, the vest portion of the restraint chained for the ones that, that don't lock anymore. And uh, yeah, I can I can see if it locked, it might not have been as good. But now that they don't lock, 
completely wonderful wing coaster. What did you think? I, I loved it. It was so smooth, except for like a little brief spot, but it was so minimal. I honestly barely noticed it. Yeah, we were in the back row and it was like that final helix, but in the back, you're, you're used to a little bit of a rattle. What else? Any other thoughts? Oh yeah, no, just, it was relatively quiet. It was smooth. I love how they have the lip tool going up and you really can't see anything until you drop, especially with the theme of the eels. I think it was set up really nicely and Tim made a comment. It's like the Tatsu of Magic Mountain here, just as wing, a, wing a wing coaster, coaster instead of flying. Yeah, it, it yeah. definitely to me gives me the wing version of Tatsu. Like just set at the top of the hill, you you're looking out both sides of the park. You just see the rest of the park. I can imagine this thing at, at the Christmas event if they if they're able to operate it. I can imagine it's just beautiful, just like Tatsu is, where you see all so the lights of the far. park. Uh, I cannot wait to get a night ride on that because that's really good, and I cannot wait for that. But we're gonna head over quickly to Tennessee Tornado because last I checked, it had a station wait or no wait according to the app. So. Let's get that on that quickly. Yeah, let's go. All right, we just got off of Tennessee Tornado. They're an old arrow looper. And uh, yeah, what did you think about that, Amy? Besides the kitty coaster, this is my least favorite. Yeah. It's rough. It's. it's a it, one and done. It's not as rough as some of the arrows we were in, like, especially Ninja St. Louis. I think that still holds the record for, like, being just absolutely brutal. But, yeah, compared to everything else here, everything else is just so good. That it's just, like, I, I, I'm good with just the one ride. I don't think I want to come back. But everything else we've done so far has been so rewritable. It's just, like, but it's still, it's just, like, I appreciate that they're keeping up with it. Um, this would be a great candidate. Like I was talking about over, over Georgia. Uh, this would be a fantastic candidate for the new gen Vacoma uh, best restraints. I think that would help a lot. Uh, maybe they might do that. I, I mean, if if you're watching Dollywood, that would be an awesome thing to do to make it a little bit more bearable for people's necks and or ears, depending on their height. Um, but yeah, you know, as it stands right now, it's definitely my least favorite in the park. Mine's the Kitty Coaster as yeah. well. So anyways, let's go head back to Olive Grove and yeah, let's go get on Dragonfly. All right, we just got off of Dragonflyer, the Vacoma uh, suspended family coaster here. That was super fun. Uh, we've only ridden a couple of them. We rode Steel Lasso at Frontier City, and I think that's the only one I can think of that we've ridden so far. That's, just, all, that's what I can think yeah, of. Yeah, so I see we, that was our second one, and in my opinion, that was so much better than the Steel Lasso. That was that was super good. Very good for families. Again, they're killing it here with the, the family market. Uh, with all these coasters they've been adding and yeah, I, I love that a lot. It was short, but honestly I, I wouldn't wait too long for that. The wait currently is like an hour So like I wouldn't do that very often uh, It's definitely if it's only like a 23 minute wait definitely go on it But uh, I don't know if it's worth an hour. What, what do you think? I definitely think it's a better ride if it's you know first thing when it's a short because it's not a long ride But it's a very it's a relatively smooth ride just a little bit maybe in the very beginning, I think, at least for myself, but it's relatively smooth. It's a quick ride. Um, good for one of those kind of step up rides for kids as they start getting bigger before you start jumping into the really big stuff. It's kind of that good intermediate spot where families could ride it, a little bit bigger kids can ride and kind of get a feel for what they like and don't like. Yeah. So with that being said, we've done eight of the 10 coasters here and you think, oh, you got to go ride the RMC, right? Well, we're actually going to do something a little bit different. Uh, if we can get all the mountain coasters in, Lightning Rod will be my 500. So we're actually going to leave the park, <laughs> go on all eight of the other mountain coasters we haven't been on yet in Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg, and we're going to come back so I can make Lightning Rod my 500. Yes, I want it to be 500. So we're going to try. Come join us on this epic adventure to see if we can do it or not. But we'll be back with you at a mountain coaster very soon. <laughs> All right, we made it to our first mountain coaster. We're going at uh, Ober Gatlinburg right now and for their ski mountain coaster, so let's go. It's up that hill up there.
so we just got off the uh, first mountain coaster of this excursion, the uh, Ober Gatlinburg mountain coaster. And uh, let's just say it's been exactly two hours since we uh, walked into that building right there. Uh, it did go down for about 10 minutes, but yeah, it was just the, just between the operation speed and then also just the amount of people that were up here. Uh, yeah, it, the, the line moves slow. Uh, the setting of the coaster itself is beautiful. It's super serene and peaceful up there. That's, that's the one thing I will give it. It's, it's beautiful up there, very quiet. Um, but the actual coaster coming down itself, uh, let's just say I wasn't a big fan of Amy. Let, let's have you say what you thought before I go into what I didn't like. <laughs> oh, what to say? Well, first of all, just the way that they run operations. It's extremely slow. And the problem is, is that unlike most places where they give you a quick rundown of the controls and the rules, when you're getting into the seat, they would stop operations entirely. Every about the 20 entire minutes. entire crowd of probably 200 people on the top floor to give them all the exact same thing when half of the people aren't even listening. So they took probably five to 10 minutes just trying to go over basic rules of what to do instead of telling each person as they're sitting down because they go over it again when you're ready to go. But every like, th you know, 20 to 30 minutes are stopping you for five to 10 minutes to go over the rule, the how you r do the cars. And it's like, you're wasting time, especially when you have a crowd that's going into a second level. And it's taking you almost two hours just to go through a line for such a slow capacity thing. I would expect them to be a lot faster on that. And plus the way that they stop you, I mean, it's, someone who's been in two car accidents the way how hard they let the cars hit each other in the station i tense up for a second just for a brief second because of that the scenery is beautiful but the older style that this is there's no auto trimming i was not comfortable even going half speed there were several moments where my seat would tilt a certain way and i'm like that does not feel good yeah um i i did go full send down the mountain and there was a couple moments at which i was questioning with the sounds the supports and track were making i was questioning my own safety and security i mean i know it's rated for well above my weight but um i just i there was a couple moments where i was deeply deeply concerned for my safety uh going full set down the mountain and yeah i just that's 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 the best i i hope that me might be able to fix it somehow in the future but if you're in the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge area, I, I would say miss this one. It's just not worth the operations. Unless you and, get here first thing when it opens. That yeah. would probably be the only time you're safe if you got here right as it opens. Yeah, other than that, just just skip it. Or just, like you said, come right when it opens. But other than that, yeah, just just be aware. Operations are great. And also, it's it's the like you said, it was the older style, like the one in uh, Branson, the Runaway, that I love. I, I do like older ones. Just This one just was another level, just a little bit too janky and sketchy for me. But anyways, let's try to get on a couple more before we head back to Tollywood. We don't know, though. It's been two hours. Okay, we made it to Ripley's Mountain Coaster. Let's hope this is better than Ober Gatlinburg. Fingers crossed. Oh, what a sight to see after over Gatlinburg. Yes, walk on. Here we go. All right, we just got done with Ripley's Mountain Coaster. In and out in 10 minutes, how I like it, especially after over Gatlinburg. And that was just fantastic. You know, it was so much smoother. Uh, you can tell it's, it's newer. It's more taken care of and yeah just super enjoyable super fun ride any any uh thoughts about it oh it's a great ride it's so nice and i'm able to you know if you can go full send and it doesn't feel weird it doesn't feel scary it doesn't feel like you're about to pop out it's a really enjoyable ride the only downside is that with my short arms i on some of these i have a hard time holding the handles down at the right angle just to get going like i have to hold the very bottom and push it forward but I'm having to lean out of my seat just to be able to get it to go. Um, but other than that though, it's still a great ride. I'll still keep doing them even with that. It's just finding the right angle to get the handles down. Yeah, but yeah, super fun. Definitely come check this one out. 
Uh, the employee and staff were great, so shout out to them. And yeah, let's get over to another one now. All right, a very short two minute drive down the road and we're at the next coaster, the Moonshine Mountain Coaster. Let's go get this one a go. Thankfully there isn't a very long line at this one. Probably about 10 minutes or so over there. But we'll be on shortly. Just got off the Moonshine Mountain Coaster, the last mountain coaster we have to do down here in Gatlinburg. And yeah, it was good fun. Uh, yeah, what did you think of it? I thought it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Um, not much different than Ripley's for sure, but the scenery is nice. The fact that it, you had the wait time just to go up the lift hill, but then it's just a straight shot down that speed that you get is so nice. Oh yeah, and, and this one, just like Ripley's, not a whole bunch of auto trimming on it at all. Really appreciated that, yeah. They're both solid. Definitely, if you're looking for uh, an hour to kill to get some mountain coaster credits, definitely hit up Ripley's and Moonshine, and just don't go to Obergatlin. We We've the heard from other people who work around here that people always say that that one is the worst. Yeah, so so just 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 come over here to these two and send definitely the better option. But yeah, we're actually gonna head back to Dollywood now. Sadly, Obergatlinburg ruined our plans to get a bunch in Pigeon Forge, but we have a, a dinner for the Ace event. Uh, here in the next 30, 45 minutes. So we're gonna head back to Dollywood now and go eat some dinner. So we'll see you guys back there when we're at Dollywood. Here comes Blaze and Fury. All right, we're back here at Dollywood now and we just rode Blazing Fury, uh, or should I say Fire in the Hole, because it felt very similar. Uh, I think there was an extra drop in there. I, I, it's been a little bit since I've been on Fire in the Hole, but I do think there's an extra drop in there. Super fun. Uh, I mean, it's a classic, you know, it's just, I appreciate that they're keeping it going. Uh, just all awesome dark ride scenes, plenty of visual props. Mm -hmm. In a day and age when there's so much screens, so nice and refreshing to see a dark ride where it's just all physical props physical animatronics, it was fantastic. What did you think? Oh, it's always a beauty being able to ride one of those things. They're always nice, they're calm. You know, a couple of little drops, but it's always relaxing and it's a nice way to just kind of get indoors, especially if it's a muggy day, just to get out of it. Like tomorrow might be. <laughs> the only downside is the single lap bar when you have two different sized people. Yeah. I have a lot of space on those drops. Yeah, she, she had a little little bit of wiggle room and that that, that, that much is an understatement. But yeah, super fun. Uh, we're gonna, we're, we're always so good. Uh, yeah, we're gonna head over to the, the dinner for our event now and we'll see you guys later, either at the dinner or afterwards for some more mountain coasters. Yeah. As part of the summer celebration, they've got these pool noodles all rainbow colored up here. And yeah, they're literally pool noodles. I'll zoom up so you can see the bottom of them, but literally pool noodles just strung up all along here. That's just awesome. <laughs> for your 45th Coaster Con event. Now your event is older than I am. <laughs> yeah, sure, in my dream. But seriously, thank you for choosing to celebrate your event here. Now we loved having you in 2012, and just like then, we have a lot of surprises for you this week, and I know that you're going to enjoy it all. In 1978, when you held your first Coaster Con, there was a lot of great music, and one of the biggest was ABBA. 
Don't you just love them? So put on your boogie shoes and get ready to enjoy Dancing Dream. We recommend guests with regular surgery. Going up in degrees, recent surgery for illness and those who are pregnant not to run a big bear mountain. The big bear mountain has been a big bear mountain. Okay, we just had some dinner, and then after that, we went to a front row ride here on Big Bear Mountain, and that was our second ride of it the day, and holy crap. I thought I liked it in the back a lot, but I think I like it in the front even more. Oh, I prefer it in the front myself. I, I was, think it's a great front row ride. It's so fantastic, and just, it's, I, I said this earlier, but it's so smooth, and it's so long, like, it, it's just, it keeps going, and I appreciate that, especially as a family coaster. Usually family coasters are good, but they usually end really short. That just keeps giving and giving and giving, and I appreciate that so much. It, it Easily one of the best coasters here. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of kind of flip back and forth, just a little bit of feel, but it's nothing too crazy. You're not being flung upside down or anything like that. Oh yeah. So it, it's just, it's nice because you get a little bit of elements, you get a little bit of just kind of swaying back and forth just in those uh, turns and such. But other than that, it's just so smooth and that's so nice. Oh yeah, so we're gonna go see if we get on uh, Mystery Mine and Thunderhead again, because I know we wanted to do uh, another ride on Thunderhead and we're gonna go see if we can get on Mystery Mine again and yeah We'll see what else we get up to we also have a couple more mouse coasters We want to try to get tonight So we might be leaving the park early and not staying for all VRT just so we can guarantee we get those three mountain coasters done tonight So I can hit a magical number tomorrow morning So wait to find out if I can but yeah, let's see what else we get up to tonight. All right, so we're leaving Dollywood right now. Uh, first thing, we just did a back row ride again on Thunderhead. Uh, since she didn't know what to say earlier, now let's get her full take on it. What did you think of your 400 coaster Thunderhead? All right, I loved it. I'm so glad I made that my 400. That is definitely one of, if not maybe, my favorite. GCI, I'm gonna have to think it over right now for a little bit just because of all some of the other woodies we've ridden. But I enjoyed that. I'm glad we did a second ride because um, I was not feeling good this morning when we rode it. My dramamine hadn't kicked in and I was not having it. I'm like, what have I done? So I had no opinion whatsoever. Yeah. But I'm glad we did a second run today because it was fantastic. It was hauling like crazy. And, but just everything about it, I loved. Oh yeah. And despite being woody, it wasn't too janky. Like we rode in the very back. Which is usually like the worst spot on wooden roll because you're right on a wheel. And I didn't really feel any pain from it. Yeah. No, I, I agree. There's they, they you can tell they've done a lot of retracking lately and it's running great. Uh yeah, definitely one of my favorite GCIs as well. It's been killing me all day. You see it back in the background right back there. Um we have all nine credits except for lightning rod. And it's not because it's not been open, it has been but I just want to make it a big milestone for me. And so we're now leaving to go ride some mountain coasters in the area, and then we're gonna go get the final two tomorrow morning. And I'll talk about that tomorrow morning, but yeah. So there is a reason we haven't done that today, don't worry. Uh, it's coming. Uh, but yeah, so just overall as a whole, Dollywood has been so, actually let's pause and then we'll come right back when the train leaves. Sorry, that was the train again. Uh, but the workers here are fantastic. And yeah, just everything about this park, it's so beautiful. Um, just all the theming and the, the thought that went into that. It's just been amazing. And yeah, the event so far has been just great to enjoy. Any overall park thoughts for yourself? I have been loving it. It's been kept very nice and clean. We've been seeing the employees going and cleaning up stuff. And so it's been kept very nice and clean, which I greatly appreciate. Because as we see, even at Six Flags Parks, they usually don't care as much. You'll find gunk everywhere. So I appreciate the fact that they are keeping the park clean. They're doing everything in their power to keep everything flowing nicely. The operations here have been extremely done well. I mean, most of the time, there isn't much of a 
layover with one car ready to come into the station while the other one's finishing up. It's usually one's coming in as the other one's going out. So the operations have been fast. All the employees, everybody has just been so nice. I mean, talking with people and chatting with everybody. The way they've been handling the uh, event so far has been great. I mean, they opened up ERT a little bit early for people during dinner just because it was going to start much later and most people just kind of get Nancy. So I appreciate that they were willing to open it up a little early for everybody. Um, hoping that food stuff kind of straightens out. They did a weird thing with the full welcome buffet today with the lines where they had three separate lines, but for three different food options in the sense of like you had your salad bar line, but then you had to go into a secondary line to go get your meats and then a third line if you wanted to get your sides. So we ended up just splitting into two different lanes to try to speed it up some. Yeah. Um, but I think that's the only one where it's everybody at once like that, for dinner at least. Yeah, um, yep. We'll have to see how they do breakfast tomorrow morning, but I mean the food's been phenomenal. We're getting spoiled over here. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting very spoiled over here, but yeah. the park has been great. Everybody's been so nice. and. They actually have, for milestones, they have signs in the stations that they can slap a different uh, number on for whatever milestone you're at. And you can just take this huge frame yep. that you can use for that, which I, which is great because not everybody realizes or not everybody prepares for a piece of paper. So it's nice that you have a little something personal for that. But yeah, um, I my only gripe with this park, it is a tiny, I was telling her earlier, it's a tiny nitpick. Uh, I love Wildwood Grove. It's a fantastic family section, but especially with Big Bear Mountain, it just there's there's just a little bit of a lack of trees in that area, <laughs> and you can just tell that they had to clear a lot of the trees off the hillside. And it's a very small nitpick, and I know they're they're starting to plant some more trees to grow back in there, but just as it stands right now, it just feels a little bit barren back there. But that's like a tiny, tiny little nitpick. That over... we can see they're already working on it. Just unfortunately, it's one of those things where you have to clear the area to be able to get everything situated. And then now they are starting to plant the trees. Yeah. So, like we said earlier, we're leaving now and we're going to be heading over to some mountain coasters. So, we'll see you all over there for some nighttime mountain coaster rides. Let's go. All right. We made it out here to the Smoky Mountain Alpine Coaster. There's a bit of a queue. So, hopefully, it's not the same two hour experience we had at Over Gatlinburg. So far, when we've seen, it looks like they're pumping out people a little bit faster. So, Hopefully this goes a bit faster, but yeah, excited to get a night ride. Looks like you have an awesome night package on this thing. So yeah, we'll see you when we get off. All right, we just got off the Smoky Mountain Alpine Coaster. Sorry, I was reading the sign to see what it was. And yeah, I love riding mountain coasters at night. And yeah, that was a great one. Uh, for me, at least, I love I loved all the the neon lights and the the stuff going down the track, and it wasn't too dark out there, but it definitely had because it's night now. Uh, it definitely was like you know I, I like night rides a little bit more than daytime rides. What did you think of it? See, and I'm the opposite. I like the night package, the light packages at night, but I can't stand the eerily pitch blackness of a night mountain coaster. It makes me feel like I'm going faster than I am. So I'm constantly, my body's constantly twitching and breaking, which is making it worse. So I prefer them during the day when I can see the environment around me. Yeah, well, that's where we're different, but that's okay. Not everyone can have the same opinion. So, all right, we're off to another mountain coaster right now. Let's go see if we can get in at least one, if not two more mountain coasters for tonight. Next up, we're here at the Goats on the Roof mountain coaster. And yeah, there's not a very long line at all. So yeah, let's go give this thing a ride. And here comes our cars. Let's give it a go. Goats on the roof. Got some Christmas lights. Oh yeah. The middle of June. Looks like we're getting closer to the top. And I see a goat little cardboard thing right there. They definitely are dedicated to their goats. When we get off this, we'll have to show you the uh, funniest thing about this place. And it's so, so cute.
just got off for a ride on Goats on the Roof Mountain Coaster. And yeah, it was it was great. I actually think I liked that a little bit more than the uh, one we just did. Just a little bit. They're, they're both pretty similar. Both have really awesome light packages, go really deep up into the, the hill and come down. But yeah, they both were super fun. This one had no weight, so that's a bonus. Uh, yeah, what did you think of that one, Amy? It was nice. It was fun. <laughs> You, you, you're not in the frame, man, but oh, okay. yeah, the, the worker over here was thinking I was videoing him. I'm not. He's, hold on, hold on. There we go. Let's get him in. There you go. Shout out to this employee right here. Oh, I yeah. Go -color. Oh, he, yeah, he, he's go calling right there. Oh, there you go. Hello. So, yeah, you might be wondering why this place is called Goats on the Roof. Well, this is Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, after all, so it's quite literally, there are goats on the roof. You can see one climbing in the back. Here we go. Yep, the, there is one climbing up to the roof right now. And yeah, let's get you some footage of these goats. Such a good goat. Yes, hello. Oh, here's a bigger goat. They really want the food. Yes. So yes, you can buy some food to feed the goats here. And yes, the goats do on the roof. Let's, uh, oh, look, there's one right there. There is a goat on the roof. Dude, you don't care. Oh, no, yes. You don't have food, but you don't care. Hi. You, you like the attention. Yes, he does. I told you here. She does. I don't know. I don't know my goat anatomy that well. I'm assuming that's a she since she doesn't have horns. Yes. But yes. There are smaller goats on the rock. There you go. They have these devices where you can actually put food in a cup and pedal it and it will raise it up to the goats that are on the roof. How genius. All right, we only have a few minutes to get over to our last mountain coaster of the night that closes in literally like 30 minutes. So we're gonna head on out of here. But that's gonna do it from Goats on the Roof. Super quaint little stop. And yeah, their mountain coaster is only 12 bucks. And uh, yeah, I think that's one of the cheapest ones we've seen so far. So yeah, definitely come give this one a check out. And also, you have to say hello to the goats too, because they are adorable. And our last stop of the night brings us to Rocky Top Mountain Coaster. It's actually the coaster that's closest to Dollywood. It's literally like right outside the entrance, almost. So yeah, let's go give this one a ride. Last one of the night. Thankfully, the line went down quite a bit from earlier. It was uh, all the way out here and back that way when we drove by right after we left Dollywood. So. Thankfully, it's not going to be as bad. Hopefully, it should be on it in the next 30 minutes or so. All right, guys. I have one more round. Now, this is falls on its last leg, so we're going to try to make it work. We're going to do you guys versus the staff, right? It's not very fair because only two of us. Actually, who wants to help us? All right. I'll let the birthdays happen, okay? Y'all want to hop over? This is the most interesting thing I've ever seen at a mountain coaster. I don't know how uh, legal this is, especially that, but uh, it's happening nonetheless. Also, this was rated the best new business in 2020 and the best mountain coaster in 2022. So uh, we'll see what happens on this uh, party mountain coaster. Woohoo! <laughs> Here it's a game of volleyball. So, but right now the, the, the people in line are winning two to zero. That is what's happening right now. All right, last mountain coaster of the night. We just got off of the Rocky Top Mountain Coaster. If you hear something different in my voice, there's a reason why. Um, there, let's just say before before we get to the coaster experience, um, if you come here at nighttime, 
there is a party atmosphere going on. And uh, in our case tonight, it ended up being uh, there is a game of uh, beach ball, volleyball, uh, <laughs> inflatable beach ball, obviously. And, and yeah, like it was just like between the staff and the, the people in line. And they were able to do that without sacrificing uh, any of the getting people through, which I appreciated. Um, but yeah, and what they said was if, if the people in line beat them, that they would give out rewrite tickets to like some of the loudest people in line. Well, me being me, I'm very loud spoken, outgoing. And so, yes, of course, I was one of the loudest people in line. So, yes, I did get us rewrite <laughs> tickets, but my voice is currently sacrificed because of it. So, needless to say, we're going back to the cabin and drinking some warm water. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's just the, the, like, just before we even got on the coaster, that was excellent. And then we got on the coaster itself. I didn't realize that it was uh, four separate lift hills and basically so it took instead of it being seven or it's like five five minutes on, on a lift hill and then one minute of dropping it actually split it up so it was like a couple minutes on a lift hill and then like 30 to 40 seconds falling or like going down and then it kept doing that uh, four total times I actually really appreciate that I, I at first I was like do I like this more than the ones uh, that like you know go all the way up and all the way down um, it's, it's compared to the ones that do the because this is the newer generation so it does do a little bit of out trimming compared to those newer generations I actually like this more because usually by that point it starts auto trimming you to the point where it's just like you know you're going to the same speed the rest of the time anyway um, so yeah I actually like this better than the other newer models I still prefer the older, older ones that don't do the auto trims just not the one at Gatlin Bear let me clarify specifically the one in Branson I love that one uh, but no, I actually really appreciated that. Uh, what, what was your thoughts on this evening's experience? This has been, I think, personally, my favorite mountain coaster. Wow. I, the experience of it, so the queue line stuff, the party, and we were hearing about other stuff that they do, like Halloween and such. They just have fun with it however they can. They've got party music blaring, and like today we were playing beach volleyball with a blow up ball, and they even actually brought members in the queue line behind the you know into their area to kind of try to even it out a little bit to give a little more up there but the line kept going they, there was no stopping it's not like we stopped to play this game and everybody sat there they kept the line going in fact people were just kind of they got the train up they got people loaded to check them go and it seemed oh, yeah. like everybody kind of knew what they were doing yeah which was nice it really flowed so nice to that at one point i'm like oh they're still like we're doing all this but they're still getting people out at a good rate to the ride itself, I usually don't like night rides. I usually feel like I'm going too fast. I hit a bump and I feel like I'm gonna fly out. I hate going full speed, any speed at all down these. And I kept going full, hands down everything the entire time. And yet there's a lot of auto trims, but it was right before these big areas. And on top of that, there was shut off the light that's in the front, the headlights, the theming. The theming around it, the tunnels, the water fountains, the buildings that they constructed. Oh, yeah. There was so much theming to it. It wasn't just your basic, you go up to the top and you do a bunch of stuff coming down. It was actual theming and little signs that were, that we're going to come back during the day so we can actually see everything because there was signs off to the side doing jokes. But it's hard to see them when it's dark out, and especially because they turned some of the lights off. Yep. So... We plan to, because Tim got those rewrite tickets, we're going to come back during the day to see all the stuff because, like, the headlights were turned off and I looked to my left and there'd just be this colorful wa just light with this water feature just going. And I'm like, well, that's pretty. Yeah. But, I've... yeah, no, it's just, it's probably my favorite ride ever on a mountain coaster. That's awesome. Yeah, I forgot to mention that. I I did get a video. We were going up one of the lift hills and they had this little stand and it was a couple of animatronic bears and the title was European Bears with yeah, you know, the, the joke. Yeah. Um but yeah I just like I'm like this is super clever but like she said there's a lot of water features, waterfalls, uh geysers in there and yeah very very well themed like I said I still think it's one of my favorite mountain coasters and yeah I agree. It was absolutely fantastic. Worst shot 
We've been, uh, we left the cabin at 7.15 this morning. It's now already 11.30 at night. We've done nine of the 10 coasters at Dollywood. And then we've done six of the mountain coasters across Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge all in one day. It's been a long day. We're gonna go home, get our, back to the cabin. We're gonna get some rest. Uh, Cause we have a big day ahead of us tomorrow. Cause uh, I don't been teasing it, but I'm finally hoping and praying that I'm gonna get a big milestone for myself at Dollywood tomorrow morning. So hopefully, hopefully it happens. And we'll see you then. So we'll see you in the morning. Bye. Have, have a good night.